Hey guys, what it is? It's your girl Cadillac. I am Cadillac Dixon. I'm the Draw My Life Prison Wife. I'm the legally blind artist that is rapping and painted for justice, hoping to see justice before it all fades to black. Yeah, it's your girl Cadillac. So I'm coming through today on May the 19th. It is Thursday. So I haven't done, like if you you know, been on my channel any length of time prior than the last month, then you know I used to do something called Throwback Thursday. Um, through my Throwback Thursday, what I would do, I do have a project called Project Reach the World that I started in 2005 after I met recording artist Life Jennings. The significance about that is that before I met Life Jennings, I dreamed that I met him and in the dream he was like you're so talented oh my gosh we have to make a song together so we made songs together I became a famous songwriter I got money and all of that and I was able to break my husband's story of being wrongfully convicted and excessively sentenced um, all of that just through the music career and I was able to afford real legal representation and my family was restored. So that's how the the dream went. But in real life, it didn't go that way. I met Life Jennings and he did realize how talented I was. I got to read him a poem called 1020 Life. I can link that in the description box below. Um, and I got to give him a drawing of um himself that i drew and he loved the drawing and he gave me some words of advice um he told me don't ever give up and he told me to tell that man of yours that life is possible okay so for me i was just convinced that the dream just was not complete because we didn't make them songs together. So I was like, okay, so maybe it's not like Jennings. Because dreams don't always go exactly straight. So maybe it... So I thought maybe it could be somebody else. You know, maybe it wasn't like Jennings. Maybe it was somebody else that I'm supposed to meet and make music with. Then I started um, just everybody who's anybody that came around Orlando, Florida. I started giving them hand painted. First, it started out as drawings, but then it evolved into hand painted T-shirts. Um, and I've gotten this to a lot of people all over the world. Later, I named it Project Reach the World. So I'm reaching the world with the story of my husband being wrongfully convicted, excessively sentenced, and I'm doing it through my artwork. So on that Throwback Thursday, I would tell you the stories of all the people I met, such as Lauren Hill. Um, I did Candy Burris. I did Steve Harvey, um, Michael Bayston. Um, I haven't done Tom Joyner yet. Um, I did... R&B singer Joe, Chico DeBarge, um, rapper B.O.B., um, T.J. Chapman, he was a producer, and the list just goes on and on and on. Um, even TLC, TLC, Chili and T-Boss, they got my artwork and was so excited about it. So I have met and got my artwork and my story of my husband being wrongfully convicted to so many people. So today I'm going to tell the story of Miss Tamar Braxton. Yes, I did get my artwork. My project reached the world to Miss Tamar Bra Project reached the world. Tamar Braxton is my part of my Throwback Thursday series where I go through and I tell you all the people that I've got my artwork and my story of my husband being wrongfully convicted and excessively sentenced in the state of Florida. As always, if you guys would like to help in the fight for my husband's freedom, I do have a petition that I created for him a couple of years ago, um, linked in the description box below. I 
I ask that you, you know, read it and if you feel compelled to sign it, sign and share because I need to get this story of my husband out. It's way overdue. Like he has done 20 years, 20 plus years for a crime that he didn't commit. Okay, so that was the whole reason of me creating Project Reach the World because I kind of was nobody. He was nobody and nobody cared that his life was taken from him. And nobody cared that, you know, our family was severed or whatever. So to get a voice to try to tell my story, I would use my artwork. Okay, so meeting Ms. Tamar Braxton. So the first time that I tried to give a Project Reach the World package. Now the package of Project Reach the World is usually going to be a hand-painted t-shirt. And I had recorded this song called My Baby Daddy, which was telling the whole story of how my husband was wrongfully convicted. Um, back then, CDs were prevalent. So I recorded a demo and I would hand paint the T-shirt of whoever I was going to meet. And I would tape it inside the T-shirt, my demo inside the T-shirt. So, and then it was also another aspect. It was my um, wild hair pieces. Now the way that the hair piece worked was the hair piece would be crazy and extravagant that it caught attention. No matter if I walked past you and you didn't want to look, girl, you had to look because you, you couldn't ignore me. You can't ignore me. That was the whole point of it. So once I got your attention with the hair piece, many times people would then put the spotlight on me or they'll call me up on stage. They'll ask me to say, hey, what is this you're doing? And then that's when I can... Um, present my artwork I'll hold up my artwork and then they're even more taken aback by oh my gosh like she's really talented she did this hair piece she did this artwork and then um, they would hopefully listen to the music and hear the story behind why I was creating this and hopefully I would get enough people talking to you know when these situations of injustice happen and people start talking about it and sharing it on social media eventually it's overturned injustice in the light does not live long injustice that is hidden in the dark crevices of places will live a long a long time um, point example of why my husband did 20 years because his story never hit the light had his story broke you know years ago I'm sure he never would have done that 20 years but it's because his story of injustice is in the dark injustice can live in the dark but injustice doesn't live too well in the light so I'm trying to shed light on it so Tamar I love Tamar. Now, kind of when I first heard about her, well, really to go all the way back, she did have an R&B career and she had another um, like in the 90s with her and her sisters. They had a group and then she also came out by herself, but it just didn't do too well or whatever. So where she really just started to flourish was when she came out on the reality show. Now, her the way she was portrayed on the show, I don't think we could have got along because I'm a humble, I'm a meek person. I cannot stand somebody that feels like that they're better than somebody else. So that's kind of the vibe that I got from her from the show. But then also soon after that show, she hit us with that music. And that's when we was like, hold on. This girl can sing. And the other thing that made me really look up to her, because you know I was in the music industry. I did start kind of late at age 24, but it's going to take you at least a good 10 years to even get anywhere in the industry. Like back then, maybe not now. Now there's overnight success or whatever. But back then, it would take you at least 10 years. So if I started at 24, it would take almost to 34 to even make it. And by the time you get 34, the industry is looking at you like you're too old. The industry does not care about your talent. Baby, I have so much talent. I've had talent since I was a kid. I have, and over all these years going on 41, I have grown so much talent. But still people put a label of, oh no, we don't want that because she's too old for, you know, and she doesn't fit that, you know, that box that they try to put you in. 
So what made me really take notice and love Tamar was the fact that she came out when she was about 36. Girl, 36.